when you order a DRO, what you're going to get is a unit that has a sliding device on it and another unit that will give you an indication of where that sliding device is. So when the slide moves, it gives you an indication of where the, where the slide has moved to. So doing a, installing a DRO is relatively simple. Here and here is where the sliding thing is mounted. Now normally you're able to screw right down to what you're mounting on, but this this device has this is interest has this widget sticking out, which is part of the counterbalance spring. So instead of being able to mount this directly to the mill, I had to put blocks out to bring it out. And the next thing you have to do is make a bracket. Because on the back of the sliding piece, there's a whole series of holes. And they give you screws and they give you some brackets. And the end brackets I've used, but the internal brackets I have not been able to use. So you have to make a bracket that mounts to the back of your the sliding device and it will mount to the to the to the mill when you get this bracket made install it to the sliding device but not to the press or to the mill when you get your bracket installed run this all the way up to the top This is snug. The bottom is, is relatively loose. You get it up there. Now this is holding the bracket where the end should be. You mark a line. Remember the bracket's not screwed down now. You mark a line where the bracket's at. Now when you run this down all the way to the bottom You want to adjust this bottom screw back and forth until the bracket and the line are together again. That means it's the same distance down here as it is up here, and there's no side forces on this sensing device. The slide is a thing that senses the position. So once you do that a couple of times and, it, and this bracket stays on the same line at the top and the bottom, then what I did is, that's when I drilled this hole. I drilled it through the bracket into the machine and tapped it. So now I know there's no side pressures on the, on the sliding device. And that's, I mean, it's relatively simple and fairly straightforward. It gets a little more interesting. This is what you call the Z, up and down. It gets a little more interesting with the Y, because the Y is the one that goes in and out. The Y is very similar to Z. You have this is fixed, it's mounted to the press, or to the mill. I don't know why I keep saying press, to the mill. And the bracket attaches to the part that goes back and forth. And it's sort of nice this way because now the sensing device is underneath the mill table. So a lot of the crap that comes off the mill when you're milling is deflected away from this. But it's the same basic procedure. You, you mount one in, try it back and forth, make sure it, it keeps track, and then drill your, drill your line in. So the Z and the Y are very similar. There's a lot of guys on YouTube that show you the same type of mounting. Where I differ is on the X-axis. The X is the one that goes back and forth. 
Okay, I have this junk guard loose and taken away. Now, to mount the readout unit is longer than the table. It's just, it's, it's got to be longer than the table for it to read all the way across. So the way we have to have a place to mount it, so we get a piece of angle aluminum and we mount that to the mill table. Then this is mounted to the aluminum. Now where I differ from a lot of them, a lot of guys make a bracket. It's very hard to get up onto this table and do drilling and tapping. So what I did is this is there's two screws here and there that mount the guard. So I made a piece of metal drilled the hole so I could bolt it in the same location that's already there. So there's no drilling on my part, no tapping. All I got to do is and drill two holes. Now I can mount it. Now there's no real interesting way to see this. What I did I drilled holes into this block. So what I did is it's not good to have something magnetic where you cut metal because a bunch of metal pieces are always around. Anyway, I put two pins into this block. Almost as, tried to make it as close as I could to the width of the back end of the uh, sensor. I put the sensor. In other words, the pins are on both sides of the sensor. And that was, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy to drill those. You can lay this on the block, mark your holes, and drill down in it and put the pins in. Now, what I want to do is, I want to capture this with the pins, and I don't want any slop or backlash. So, once you get it, once you try it, if there's any kind of movement, all you need to do is take your pliers and bend that pin in a little bit so it's snug. So this now is not really screwed like the other ones are, screwed to a bracket. This is actually captured between two pins. These, there's not a lot of pressure to hold this, I mean the slide moves very easy. So these pins do not have a lot of pressure against them. So it's, it's not like something is going to have a lot of force, a lot of anything. It's just, it's just two little things that hold this thing in one position. I chose this because it puts it almost in the center of the press, or center of the mill. That gives me maximum run of, run of my uh, measurements. Uh, this area here is cut away to relieve where the cord comes out of the bottom. Cord comes out of the bottom of the sensor, so you need some relief for that cord. And that's not a big deal. Um, really the most complicated thing is when you have to drill and tap the holes. Where are they? I don't know if we can see what down in here. Sort of see it. The screws that screw the aluminum in. The reason I use an angle bracket is because it also shields and keeps a lot of stuff from falling down on the uh, on the on the measurements on the devices. So what's the reason for a DRO? It's basically what they call backlash. And I'll show you what that means in a second, but 
let's pretend this is part of the this is a nut and this is the inside of the threads of a nut this is a screw the thread of the screw if these things are perfectly matched and touching you're going to have major problems. It's going to bind up. Any minor thing is going to clog it up. You can't get lubricant in there. So what you're going to have to do is there's got to be a gap in there somewhere. And that gap will allow some dirt, will allow oil. But what that means is the nut can move a little bit before it touches the thread or it can move this way. So if you're screwing down, say, it's touching here. Then you turn it around, you want to screw up, it's going to be touching here. That distance is backlash. The sloppier the thread, the wider the backlash. There's a nut and everything that attaches this handle to this screw. If it's really tight, so there's no movement, you can't move it. It's it's basically you, you, you tighten it down so you got to have a little space in there for this to have movement well that space once again when you screw in one direction it's going to go one way when it screws in the other direction it's going to go the other way on these mini mills there's this thing is sort of a major problem I really don't like these things but there's, there's a we can get in this position and get it in there. There. Now it's locked in to this little knob. Now this knob will move the handle. So let's move the knob till I'm lined up with zero. Close enough for all practical purposes. Now this is Z, X, Y, Z. I'm going to go up there and make that zero. So I'm now reading zero. Now I'm going to go all the way around is 60 thousandths. Forty-five, fifty, fifty-five. So by this I went sixty thousandths. And that reads 60 thousandths. Now let's go back again the other direction. Okay, now I'm reading zero again. I'm reading 58 thousandths. What happened? Well, obviously something's loose in here. Something's not right. Maybe this set screw is a little loose. Maybe there's. So it's, this thing is very hard to trust. This you can sort of work around. But why worry about it? Now I know exactly where I'm at. Another advantage of the DRO, let's go down to the bottom, which is X. So I can move it. Let's say I've, I've been cutting apart. I get to this point. I measure the part. I need to go 20 thousandths more. So 9 and 20 is 14, 5, 1, 4. So I got to remember 5 and 4. Or I could zero it now. Now all I need to do is remember 20 thousandths. So now I can go 20 thousandths without remembering any numbers, without adding, without subtracting. So that's another advantage of the DRO. Uh, and I mounted the three of them together, so it's X, Y, and Z. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it of the DROs. I've been using them. I really enjoy it. I got two more I'm going to mount on my lathe.